What's up, everybody? How we do? I, I know what zoo is in the thumbnail. I do. I'm raising my hand right now for Sophie to call on me. Sophie, I know. I know what zoo is in the thumbnail. But I'm not going to tell you. Ugh. No, I'm just <laughs> It's Lucas. It's Lucas 070's uh, zoo there that we're going to be taking a look at. Oh, look at that. We got the... We got the display capture on instead of the game. There we go. Display capture, game. Display capture, game. All right, anyways. Hi, how are we doing? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome on in. Thank you for your patience this weekend as I've moved around the community showcase uh, twice. Uh, moved it from yesterday to today because I was heckin' busy yesterday. And then again this morning because I was really busy this morning as well. Um, and I didn't want to interfere with uh, simply Savannah Banana's stream there. She was streaming some Pine Mountain. I didn't get to catch much of it. I got to catch some of it later on. But yeah, it's been a busy weekend. I start a new job um, tomorrow. Uh, I start tomorrow and it's kind of different where I'm going to be going um, far away. Basically, I'm going to be staying at a hotel and like there's different conferences and all this kind of fun stuff. So uh, yeah, I had to kind of do a lot of prep, uh, prepping for that uh, to be gone for a whole week from the house and everything. So but anyways, let's go ahead and get started with today's shram like we always do with the game freezing there it goes we're unfrozen that's all good uh you need some uh, inspiration there savannah <laughs> some inspiration hoping the stream will help me too me too there's definitely some awesome stuff to look over but the first part savannah's gonna hate because she is not a mod person but that's okay we forgive her we forgive her she'll see the light one day <laughs> but let's go ahead and start with our mods like we always do um and yeah we will just run down the list here so first up for our mods we're gonna have this big looking thingy dingy <laughs> oh good it had babies i'm doing something different this week where i actually enabled the babies to be turned on because i realized that we never take a look at the babies uh during this so we're gonna go ahead and do that this time so the first thing up that we have here is in mods as always this is not in order of the list that i gave you so apologies there um but this is what is this called the beluga sturgeon look at this beluga sturgeon what is this is a giant fish man <laughs> it's not a fish man it's a giant fish comma man <laughs> But look at this thing. I've never heard of this fish before, but it looks ginormous when it gets um, when it gets older. So can someone tell me what's up with the beluga sturgeon and how does it taste? And how does it taste? Uh, so yeah, this one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. It looks like it was poured it over. Actually, I do know it was poured over. Uh, who was it? Leaf. Leaf told me that this thing right here, this is not a person. I've been shouting out this company. Uh, this is apparently a website or company. I can't remember. He messaged me about it last week, but <laughs> he said that this is basically um, like a texture website where people are just downloading like their textures or models from. So I've been shouting them out thinking it's a person this whole time. Um, but yeah, it's not. It's just a website. So but anyways, but there's the uh, Beluga Sturgeon from the website, Erica. Buff Zoo and Giorno Pizza. Um, so there you go. Pretty big, awesome looking fish there for your aquariums. Let's go to the next one. Next up, we're going to have... Oh, this one looks so cool. I love this one. This is from, I think, Leaf, if I remember right. So this is the De Braza's monkey. Yeah, this is from Leaf. Never heard of this species of monkey before. But yeah, the De Braza's monkey. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. All of our uh, animal and, and zoo uh, nerds, y'all gotta inform us about this looking monkey here. Now, I know there's a female. I had to get a new female in here because the one I had before was really old, so they wouldn't reproduce. Uh, here's the... Uh-oh! Uh-oh, something happened. <laughs> something... Oh, no! <laughs> hey, Leaf, or... <laughs> oh, no! Uh, I think Leaf just did this one by himself. Hey, Leaf, maybe... This might not be a, a modern thing. It might be a planet zoo thing, but something... something... Oh, there it goes. It fixed itself, but... It looks like it was kind of warping a little bit. But yeah, anyways, it looks really good. I like that there. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, there you go. There's the De Braza's monkey uh, from Leaf. Really cool. Is that a frontier bug? I thought so. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, it's, it's when you look at it a certain way, it, it snaps <laughs> for some reason. You can look at the, um, yeah, was it the capuchins? Yeah, the capuchins. That's when we got that bug in there. So that's a frontier bug, unfortunately. Maybe it'll get fixed in the future. Oh, excuse me. Gosh. Yep, that's the capuchin monkey glitch. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Nice. Next up. Oh, I think this is my favorite one. And we do have a baby for this one, too. Cool. I think this is my favorite one. Here is the mountain gorilla. This is from Leaf and Nick, I believe. 
Yeah, the uh, the, yeah, the mountain gorilla from Leaf and Nicholas Lionrider. And for some reason, I do think they are a little bugged because they like to do this like all the time. But <laughs> look at these guys. They look so cool. And here's the little monkey. <laughs> here's the, the little baby. But yeah, for whatever reason, when you load into the game or just first like adopt them they just go and stand at the edge of the water and they'll just stay there forever i sat here and built out like the entire community showcase map and stuff like that um and they just go to the edge of the water and just stand there and look out upon it for whatever reason but when you kind of move them then they kind of like reset it looks like and are all better but look at these things they are so cool he looks like your brother <laughs> nice these look so cool, especially in conjunction to the, what do we have? We have the Western Lowland Gorillas, and these are the Mountain Gorillas. So these look like they're bigger almost. They almost look like they're bigger. So there's the uh, male there, I had to get a drink. Here's the female, I love the way that they look though. Looks so cool, here's the female. Oh, big things. And then there's, yeah, there's the little baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to put the babies on, but yeah, anyways, now we have them. So yeah, there you go, Mountain Gorilla from Leaf and Lion Rider. Really, really cool. Really cool to add to your either like primate section or uh, something like that. Next up, oh, you got to let me know if I pronounce this one right. The Kupri or the uh, Kaupri? Uh, but it looks like we have another like hoofstock animal. I think we have a Bay Bay. We do have a Bay Bay as well. Nice, cool. What's up, Lion? Hey, Silver Fox, good to see you both. Glad that, uh, Silver Fox, glad you could make it. Silver Fox was thinking he couldn't make it today, but since we started later, definitely was able to make it. But here we go, here we have the Kupri or the Copre or something. Um, looks like another, like, yeah, again, hoofstock, like, cattle type thing. What, tell me about yourself. I kind of forgot that we had the Zoopedia this whole time. I'm asking questions like, what's this animal? And we have the Zoopedia. Um, forest ox, also known as the gray ox, is a little known forest dwelling wild bovine species native to Southeast Asia. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. The really small area right there. Interesting. And they are, they're critically endangered as well. I've never heard of this before. I've never heard of this kind of uh, bovine <laughs> uh, before. So there's the male, obviously. Here's the female. Looks really cool. So yeah, get kind of a critically endangered bovine species into your uh, into your zoo. And then here's the baby. I love the baby. Look at the ears and everything. Really cool uh, texture with it. Hey, don't just walk on the little chicken, dude. Watch your step there, bye bye. <laughs> Next up. Oh, did I say who that was from? Um, that is from... There it is. That's from Leaf and Monsoon. So really good stuff from Leaf and Monsoon. Next up, let's do the California quail, bruh. There's a bunch of these things. They used to be babies, but then they weren't. <laughs> they matured, like, really fast. Dude, that's a really nice looking mod, isn't it? Yeah, it's the bay bay. <laughs> but look at here, we got the California, um, the California quail. So here's Ombre, the California quail. And this is going to be coming to you by uh, Ronnie Marin. R-O-N-Y-M-A-Y-R-O-N. Ronnie Marin. And yeah, these things are pretty cool. It looks a little frumpy when it's uh, sat down, like it's kind of going into itself. Oh, no, it's not. It has a little feather sticking out the end. I thought that the face was all uh, perched up or something. Uh, but no, there, so there's the male and the females are running around here all over the place. Hello. And there's the female. There you go. Those are kind of cool little bird species. I always use some more itty bitty bird species. Nice. Next up. Next up. Who did that? Who did that? Okay, oh, another tortoise. That's right. Who did the tortoise? Was this Leaf again? Leaf has done a bunch of stuff for us today. <laughs> so let's see. The What is this called again? What kind of tortoise? Oh, African. African Spurred Tortoise. This is from Leaf and Lion Rider. I think they're working heavy on the uh, some new animals for the safari pack. Uh, but one of these was... Are you dead? Or just pregnant? <laughs> no, you're just... Okay, you're neither. You're just laying down. All right, but here's the African Spurred Tortoise from Leaf and Lion Rider. You're right. I, I totally agree, Lion. Yep. Any birds are always welcome. So there's another tortoise species, the female. I think it was. I thought it was pregnant from beforehand, but must not be. And then here's the male. And here's the. Oh, look at them. They're both just like sleeping. <laughs> he's he's so tired. He's like, I'm just gonna sleep in these fish. <laughs> I love the uh, their shell texture though, and everything. All the bumps on the shell texture. It looks a lot different than the ones we have in game, right? The ones that we have in game, the Galapagos and the other one, the one that starts with an A. <laughs> I don't remember. I think I've used the tortoises like a total of like two times. Um, but they don't really have like a bumpy shell like that. How you said hello is exactly how I picture that bird saying hello if it could talk. 
<laughs> Try and personify all the animals. Look at here they go again. I don't know what it is. All but the mountain gorillas, they love to do this. See? They, there's just something about them. They're like getting ready to take over the world. They're just like observing the world like, yes, everything I see before me. Simba. Until the Copre comes up and is like, excuse me. I'm coming through. Excuse me. All right, anyways. <laughs> Too many voices. We're not playing D&D. &D. <laughs> All right, next up. Next up. Oh, yeah, the last one, actually, uh, for the animal mods is the Northern White Rhinoc Rhinoceros. There it is. Uh, and then we have a baby for this one, too. Uh, but look at this, uh, this family here, this family pack of the Northern White Rhinoceros. And this is going to be made by, I think this is Nick and Leaf again. Uh, yep, Nick and Leaf bringing you the Northern White ri uh, Rhino. So wh which one do we have in game? We have the Southern White Rhino, right? Let me, I just need to refresh myself here. Southern. Yeah, so we have the Southern White Rhino in game. And then we have the Northern White Rhino in mods. I, oh, they both look really good. Uh, Northern White Rhino isn't even new, I should mention. Yeah, I thought we've looked at this before. We basically just looked, uh, took my old 1.5 model and just renamed it. <laughs> Whatever works. Uh, but nonetheless, still looks really cool. So if you want to get some more rhino species into your African sections, uh, definitely can do that. Yeah, looks really cool. All right, and then the last mods um, I actually don't have in game because they were involved and I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> Just to be honest with you, I had limited time this week to kind of get mods and stuff all set. So I didn't take the time to install these last two mods because they were involved. You have to get like the Cobra tools and make sure you don't have any other like OVL type things. I don't know. You need to read the instructions on these last ones. They are amazing mods. Oops, I don't have it open. My bad. Uh, they are amazing mods. So don't like, you know, if you really want to get these in, take the time, but they are more involved than normal mods. So I will say that. So these last two mods, uh, the first one is going to be the no grid 1.6 mod. And this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. So this makes everything in game off the grid. No more grid. Everything. So wall pieces, roof pieces, bins, donation box bins, everything in game is off the grid now. So basically it makes it prehistoric kingdom, essentially. We have essentially a prehistoric kingdom now where anything, again, anything that has this little grid thing and you know, you place it down like a grid like shows up, no more. And you can take it and flip it all. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm wording that wrong. The grid still shows up. You can just flip it around on the Y and X axis. Uh, y, X, and Z, right? Um, but yeah. So it's a little bit more involved to install it. But uh, again, it's probably really worth it if you would like to do that. Because that is just like... <laughs> Should have probably sent you the mod if it's the path one. It's the path one as well. So the path one and this one. So yeah, actually, this is speaking of the path one. So that was the first one that is a little bit more involved. Um, so yeah, that, that one's really cool. The no grid, that's amazing. I've been asking that forever. Uh, and then the free build one, the no clipping free build, is again pretty much how it sounds. I know there's a video here. Um, so yeah, we'll just kind of show this off. We'll just kind of show this off. So this is a no, uh, a free build for the path. The path can go through anything, can go through itself. It doesn't affect, apparently, um, it doesn't affect the guest placement as well. The guests can go through this no matter what, doesn't matter. So you can get it going underwater, you can get it going up straight up mountains. Um, you can get it, go like you see here, we can get it going through barriers as well. So, yeah. Yeah. These two mods are just like... <laughs> oh, even Savannah is sitting there going like, I might even mess with that. Because, yeah, isn't that's groundbreaking. Being able to turn off the gridded or the grid for the gridded pieces is groundbreaking. How hard are these mods to install? I don't think they're too too bad. I just didn't I didn't have too much time to look into it too much. Um, but it's you have to get the Cobra tools. Excuse me, sorry, I had to get another drink there. You need to get Cobra tools um, installed. And to be kind of frank, I know that they wanted to rush this mod out, but the mod uh, creator needs to do a better job. Because um, half of the instructions for installing the mod are look it up on YouTube. 
And I'm sorry, but you can't do that <laughs> for a big mod like this that you're trying to promote. You can't have half the instructions when people have no idea what the Cobra tools are and all that kind of fun stuff. You can't just put, go look it up on YouTube for half the build. So uh, in my uh, opinion, uh, Kadionic, uh, amazing mod, but they need to do a little bit better job in uh, telling people how to install it especially for plebs like myself and others who don't really mess with this kind of stuff that much. So, uh, but yeah, those two mods, I do have them uh, linked in the description down below, so be sure to check those out. Um, and uh, yeah, no, uh, take some time to kind of mess around with them. Uh, Cause yeah, they are, they're very, very necessary. Those are huge mods, huge breakthrough mods there. What happens with the mods after the update? I'm not sure. So that's another thing. They're, the modders are, I think I've read like even in a few, I shouldn't name drop, just a few other modders have said they believe it'll be okay, but we've been told that a few times. So I would say at your own discretion. <laughs> so I would say at your own discretion. Um, because yeah, we've been told in the past that things won't break and then Frontier does something that the modders don't even like expect to see or like happen or anything like that and then it breaks it. So uh, yeah, with anything, we'll just, we'll say it's a 50-50 shot. I think it's safe to say it's a 50-50 shot. So awesome. Hey, really good stuff on the modders there. Um, amazing uh, animal mods, of course, as always. Definitely get these, um, you know, definitely get these into your uh, parks and everything. And then also, yeah, definitely go back and check out those no grid and the pathing, uh, the free form pathing tool and everything. Cause that's, it's really groundbreaking. I can't wait to see what else comes out of it. I mean, where are all these modders for Planet Coaster? <laughs> where are all the modders for Planet Coaster? Dang. Do, do, do you stickly stuff already in the game just unlocked? Yeah, I mean, that's fine and dandy, but um, just, from personal experience, we've been told a few times, don't worry about it, it won't break, don't worry about it, and like two or three times in a row it's broken. So <laughs> we can say it's safe and everything, but also we never know what Frontier is going to do. Um, so just keep that in mind. The Frontier might switch it up and just crash your mods. So, all right, for the things, the blueprints, there it is. We have from Sophie, yeah, Sophie, let's go ahead and you kick everything off for the uh, blueprint workshop items there. So. Do, do, do. There's your stuff. So the first thing, and hey, actually, I saw this up on the front page of the workshop. So Sophie, congrats on that. Give yourself a pat on the back for making it on the front page of the workshop there. Uh, but we have the wooden chain link fence pack. And I believe, excuse me, I believe that you were saying uh, at the end of last week's episode, you're like, you know what? We need, I need to make another fence pack. And look, you sure did. <laughs> this is great. This is really good. I love the uh, chain link fence pack here. Gosh, I keep picking me. I'm sorry. Um, not only that, but some really good wood fence packs as well. Really, really good stuff. So yeah, definitely check these out. Always need some more uh, fence packs, right? I, I really can't remember the last time I built a custom fence because between Savannah, Estan, Sophie, Zoof as well, um, I've just been taking out everyone else's fences, basically. <laughs> So nice. And then next to um, that, we have the Pygmy Hippo House uh, from Sophie as well. So kind of in that same uh, African, Australian type vibe. Really cool Pygmy House. Probably could use that for any kind of animal, but more specifically made for Pygmies. And then the last thing here, really cool. I've, um, I don't think we've had a habitat design like this uh, before, but we have the, the paw print habitats, uh, habitat here from Sophie. And yeah, look at this. You can just kind of put an animal in there and uh, imagine putting, you know, big old pathway around and everything. So yeah, that's really cool. It's really cool. It's shaped out like the paw print there. <laughs> nice, so cool. Yeah, good stuff from uh, Sophie's Skin Giraffe. All right. Next, yeah, right, always need a good fence. Always need a good fence. Next up, Leaf. Leaf's all over the place today. Leaf almost had the trifecta. If Leaf would have submitted a um, a park or a zoo to look at, Leaf would have had the hat trick today. Because he has mods, he has workshop items, but just not the uh, the zoo. Maybe we'll get that soon. So from Leaf, we have uh, three really cool things. So the first one is the planted aquarium. I'm actually gonna turn off the lights here. I believe he did some lighting for it. Yes, he did. Yes, they did. So here we go, here's the aquarium here, but the planted, um, what'd you call it again? The planted aquarium. So that's really cool. 
This is really good. Look at the fish swimming in there. I went ahead and put a glass barrier around this and filled this up with water as well, just to kind of make it look a little bit, uh, I guess, more complete. But yeah, this is really cool. I can imagine uh, maybe multiplying this around in like an interior section and then maybe um, putting different fish inside the, uh, the aquarium area or switching out some of the foliage and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, really cool there from Leaf. Other things from Leaf. Yeah, we got the swan boat. Heck yeah, look at this. Swan boat with like some classic 80s like glasses on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it almost looks like it has some like 80s sunglasses. <laughs> um, but yeah, look at that. Nice swan boat there. Heck yeah. And then the last thing was actually a habitat. It was a really cool, well done habitat here. Uh, so hopefully it looks like Leaf is working on a project or a zoo or something like that. Maybe we'll get a completed one there in a little bit. Uh, but this is going to be for a red panda. Yeah, red panda habitat from Leaf. This is really well done too. I like all the uh, climbing structures out here. Hey, what's up, basic builder? We have really cool uh, climbing structures. And these little cubbies. You see these little cubbies that he made, like over, uh, over stretched over the water. That's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty nice there. So cool. Good stuff from Leaf there. Uh, good three, three items. I think I'm gonna probably use this, uh, this aquarium set right here because it's really, really uh, easy to replicate it over and over again. So cool, nice. Next creator. It's gonna be Kezia. Always like seeing some good stuff from Kezia here. And this is going to be the giant sized wine goblet. And yeah, I agree. That is a giant sized wine goblet. That is, that is on the nose as to what it is. Here's a uh, here's a, a person so we know. So yeah, it's probably about an eight to nine foot tall wine goblet. Or you know, a chalice of some sort. So if you need one for your, uh, for your projects, did I get it? Oh, I missed. Stupid gnat. <laughs> that stupid gnats just had eggs or something in one of our plants because they just got really bad. Uh, but yeah, if you need a giant chalice for like a, uh, I don't know, like a D and D park or something like that, boom, done, got it. Good stuff there from Kezia. Move it up a bit. Oh, okay. What do you think? Like, like right, right about that? So it has a little base. Yeah, nice. There it is again. I got it. Fricker. <laughs> I am all that kills now. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> I love accurate titles, though. We got we we have a thing for uh, people having really great titles. Oh, nice. Next one up here. Let me actually lower this down. <laughs> you betcha, Goron. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to happen, because now that people are talking about eating bugs and stuff later on, people are there's gonna be like bug uh, activists. Like, you can't spray bugs out of here. Be nice to the bugs, only kill them humanely. Anyways. <laughs> uh, next up we have from Ash T. Ash T4. Uh, they have some really cool stuff here. Um, so the first thing is going to be the lockout for Habitat Gate. Actually, you had a really cool description of this in the blueprints. Um, so I wanted to kind of read that off for everyone there it is uh so helps naturalize those pesky plain habitat gates with the weird gaps around them add some extra guests and biosecurity the bars on the inside can be used to align to the door so if you're not sure what they're talking about because i think this is such a cool idea but yeah you know how whenever you put stuff down you get these weird kind of you know gaps around everything you can definitely you know line this up for like a, a perimeter area and i love the details that they put in this as well Obviously, you have kind of a more plain one, so if you want to use that, you can. But, you know, you have this one over here, that uh, mandatory boot wash station. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. And then we have the uh, the care protocol logs and go and check in and check out and everything. Hey, there's Ashley. Yeah, thank you for submitting them. It looks like you've either been watching a lot of Animal Planet or Discovery or whatever, uh, the zoo shows, or you uh, just visit a zoo or you work at a zoo because these are very accurate. Nice. And then the uh, next thing out of three that we have is ba, 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 ba. there it is the north african centerpiece from ash t4 this is really cool so you can definitely uh switch out the fennec fox if you need to for any other um animals that fit the theme but yeah look at this really great planting is a really good use of the new um north africa or the africa set right really cool to still see builds coming out when we're probably about like a week away from a week or two away from an announcement for a new dlc love that there's still um builds coming out from the recent pack and everything it's so cool you grew up on a dairy farm so a lot of crossover oh yeah nice yes 
<laughs> and then the last bit here, some more billboards. I think that these are kind of like fences where people always can use some more billboard frames. But yeah, billboard frames and signs here. So yeah, really cool themed uh, billboard signs here. So neat. Yeah, really good stuff there from Ash T4. Um, so definitely go and check that stuff out. Put it into your projects. Yeah, and hopefully you see some more stuff from you in the future. Do, 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 do. Your husband got his first pets at 36 year old, a scorpion. I had to spray the house for flies and put all the pets in the laundry room, not thinking about the fact that the scorpion is in fact a bug. Oh no, uh, he died a very slow, painful death. I murdered his first pet. That's terrible. You you declared chemical warfare on the, uh, on the scorpion. What the heck, dude? You carpet bombed the scorpion and he died. What the heck? <laughs> Anyways. Next up, to fit the season, and we were just talking about my family and I were just talking about this yesterday when we were hanging out. That was so hot, we can't wait for the autumn time to uh, come here. But yeah, we have from Beckaboo, we have your favorite autumn set from Beckaboo here. And this is so good. Look at this. So many clever items uh, to look through. Let me change the sun just a little bit so we can kind of see it a little bit. There we go. A little bit better. So yeah, for, we have some like scarecrows, some pumpkins, some leaves. Look at this. Now, what does it use to do this? Oh, these are the uh, flower bed, right? Yeah, the classic flower bed. I always forget we can change the color of this and it's such a cool texture to uh, make there. So, <laughs> nice decent. <laughs> we yeah, have, look at all these little gravestones here made out of the temple pieces. Clever, clever. Using the rope, some of the new rope pieces that we got. Speaking of, hey, um, <laughs> speaking of these rope pieces, isn't it just like the worst that we got these amazing new rope pieces from Frontier and the Africa pack that are recolorable? I mean, that's awesome, right? But isn't it the worst that we like we, we got all these curved ones, but we didn't get straight ones? Well, hey, guess what? Upcoming in uh, Nicholas Lion Rider's Safari pack, look what he made. And it took him like literally 30 seconds to make this. He made that, he made these little diamond pieces too, that are all, these are all recolorable by the way. Uh, these are really easy to make uh, bridges with, like rope bridges, like this. Uh, but yeah, look, look at this like crap here. How did, how could, how do we not get any sh recolorable straight pieces? You know what I mean? I'm so glad that he, I'm so glad that he took the time to do that. Um, so yeah, keep a lookout for that in the that's that's not released yet. That's the beta version of it. That's out for some content creators right now. Um, but yeah, the ads in straight versions of the curved ropes. So <laughs> um, cool. But yeah, let's keep going looking through here. Look at this. You got bobbin for apples, little crates and stuff like that as well. Oh, so cool. I love all the uh, jack o' lanterns too. So well done. Speaking of fences, some more fence packs to kind of go. Oh, I missed the spider. I didn't even see the spider and the ghost before. That's so funny. <laughs> oh man, hopefully we see some uh, we see some more uh, autumn type builds. It's all about that time of year, isn't it? About that time of year. And you know, not to uh, overshadow Becca's build at all, but actually a build that goes along with hers really well. Let's see if it's out here still. Yeah, if you look at this one as well, I think it's Kay Hollins. I used this last year for one of my uh, builds. Actually, Savannah, you did a um, you use this too, I believe, or you built your own. Savannah also has a really good autumn set. Um, so yeah, using all these combined. Um, but yeah, this is from Kay Holland, if I remember. Yeah, Kay Holland's uh, autumn set. That they did a uh, Halloween set. Excuse me, more of a Halloween set. Um, so yeah, really cool arches and scarecrows, and look at all these little sets going through here as well. They have a corn maze, little uh, graveyard for extinct animals as well. The extinct, extinct species. Uh, let me throw this in the... I don't have it linked, so let me also throw this in the comments or the chat section there. Here you go. This is Kay Hollins that we're looking at right now. So, yeah, there's that one. Yeah, and then Savannah also built her own. If you go look at uh, Savannah's workshop, she built her own as well. So it just reminded me of it because, yeah, Becca Boo's is really good. It's like a, uh, um, an upgraded version of all those with all the newer pieces that we have, like from the Africa set and all that stuff. So you combine all those together, you get really, really fleshed out Africa set, or out Africa, uh, autumn and Halloween set. So cool. Uh, and then speaking of really fleshed out, we also have from Becca Boo, we have the Autumn Walk. And this is a habitat here. Not sure what goes in here, but you can kind of use your imagination and put your own things in there. But yeah, look at this. I think there's supposed to be a creek running through here, if I remember right. 
Um, but oh no, I'm sorry, it's right here. It's right here. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. There is. Uh, but yeah, look at this cute little autumn walk habitat. So again, you could probably put some. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, maybe some peacocks. <laughs> Something you could walk through with, right? Something you could walk through there with. But yeah, that's really cool. Nice autumn scene. So yeah, there you go from Becca Boo. Be sure to check out her workshop to get all those fun autumn things there. And rounding out our workshop today. This is going to be Planet Zoo Blogger. Oh, nice. Yeah, they have some really cool stuff. So the first thing from them is going to be the sunshade. And uh, yeah, here we have a little sunshade from them. I like the kind of awkward angle that it's at. Right? Can I get that one to kind of jut out a little bit? I can just give it a little bit of difference there. So we have the sunshade. And then next to it, we have this really cool um, info wall. I love this. It's kind of themed, kind of not. Like, I love the silhouettes that we have in the background. Wait, where did they get this deer silhouette? Have we had this in game or something? Hold on. Don't tell me that Frontier gave us, like, a deer silhouette. Shut the fuck. They gave us a deer silhouette, but they haven't given us deer yet? I, didn't, I legit didn't know this was in game. And that, like, makes me so sad. <laughs> I just want a deer in game. Is that confirmed that we're going to get? No. That's been in game since, like, what, Alpha or something like that? these uh animal signs maybe we'll finally get it with the next pack maybe we finally we'll get the deer to fill out the uh the deer sign there <laughs> but anyways either way uh, i love the combination of pieces here look at we have some of the arctic set there uh we have some of the just primitive pieces um yeah really good combination of a lot of the um sets there uh there's a statue too as well is there is there is there now that you mentioned it, i believe that you're right i believe you're right Oh yeah, not only that, but they have like all these things. They have this sculpture here for the deer. Yeah, they have this one that Planet Zoo Blogger used. And then yeah, they have a full on freaking elk like statue. So that's cool. But but anyways, um, yeah, no, Planet Zoo Blogger, really good stuff. They're really useful as well, right? I'm just to make sure there's no back end, no. Um, but yeah, really useful as well. And there's Planet Zoo Blogger. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Good stuff. Always look forward to seeing your uh, your build submitted. So awesome. But yeah, they went ahead and rounded out the, yes, yep, that is it for our blueprint. So yeah, really, really good stuff. There are a lot of fences to pick from, whether it's from Sophie or Becca sneaking in some spooky fences. <laughs> uh, Leaf coming in hard with the, coming in hard, coming in hot, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in hot with the uh, the aquarium and uh, habitat builds there. Really cool. Get yourself a giant chalice, just in case it's one of those nights building and playing at the zoo. Got to have a chalice the size of a person. Um, Ash tea, really cool stuff with the uh, habitat gates and everything like that. That's really, really useful. And then, of course, playing a zoo blogger with the info sign and some sun shaders there as well. So, yeah. Uh, that's a reindeer statue. Oh, heck. Dang. Oh, um, I forgot to, thank you, Silver Fox. I forgot to delete it down below. Uh, he did, Sadas did submit something, but when I tried to place it down, it crashed my game. So I believe that he is using um, a mod of some sort. So I messaged him about it, but didn't hear back. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you want to download Sawdust thing, I believe it has a mod in it. I don't know what mod, uh, but it crashes when I place it. So just, there's that. But anyways, anyways me out here calling deer statues reindeer statues i kind of forgot we had reindeer in game <laughs> um cool we have three zoos to look over one of which is the thumbnail we're gonna save that one for last because it's a update to greenfield zoo and we love seeing some updates to greenfield zoos love seeing updates to greenfield zoo from lucas if this is one of your recent times visiting us for the community showcase first off hi glad you found it uh, but second, yeah, we uh, look at a lot of zoos that get updated over the course of time. And Greenfield Zoo from Lucas, this is update five. This is the fifth update that we have seen um, from Lucas there for uh, Greenfield Zoo. It's always uh, it's always exciting to see an update to this zoo because it's really, really uh, well done. But uh, the first one we're looking at here, this is from Drawrin, actually. This is GTF Roleplay Zoo. And I'm not sure what this is all about, but it sounds like it's a like roleplay tabletop like game or like it's a DD &D type themed zoo like each animal is worth like a point or something i don't know i'm not really too sure so uh we're gonna see what this is all about but yeah this is gonna be gtf roleplay zoo from drawin let's see got friedsburg zoo oh we've looked at this before i believe i wonder why it's called something different now um okay so a lot of construction work. Cool. 
Challenge yourself. All right, so you have to challenge yourself to... Let's see. We have tokens? <laughs> so, let's go ahead and take a look at Gottfriedsburg Zoo or uh, GTF Roleplay Zoo. Let's see. Can't read that, unfortunately. Don't know the language. Uh, but yeah, as you first come in here, looks like we have a bunch of um, overhead animals kind of going everywhere. That's pretty cool. So let's see. <clears throat> Signal not found. Bummer. Today's program, the year of all the times for everything to kind of go out. Really cool signs everywhere. Got the adopt an animal species out there. Look at the backside. The backside of water. What's that? Backside of. Like the backside of these. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to look at the backside of there, buddy. Sorry. Of the flag. Oh, of the flag. Okay. Um. Okay. What flag? <laughs> what am I missing here, man? We gotta, we gotta do notes or something beforehand. <laughs> so we're not just shooting by the hip trying to figure this out. I don't I don't know, Jordan. You'll have to write me out some notes or something, buddy. <laughs> Let me check your blueprint or something to see if you wrote notes there. We can't be figuring stuff out in the middle. Here we go. <laughs> Alright, this is my zoo in an RPG Planet Zoo game. Starter animals. Black Buck Arctic Fire. That doesn't help much either. That doesn't help much either. Oh, if you want to know what it stands for in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, man. All right, we're just gonna look at the zoo as if it's just a zoo. Um, the RPG element, I'm not sure what that's all about, but um, yeah, if you wanna, um, we can write out instructions and look at that another time. <laughs> Sorry, man. But cool, let's look at the, all this. All right, so we have this little lake out here with some flamingos to start us off with. Yeah, lots of really cool little habitats all around. What's this section we're going into? The Dark Forest of Europe. Ooh. <clears throat> Those of you wanting to get more European animals in here, this would be the perfect spot to get more of them in. I think there's some modded animals back here. I probably won't have all of them. Probably won't have all the modded animals in. But yeah, hopefully we get a European section. I know um, a lot of Europeans really want some European animals in there. Welcome to the Bird Show. It starts at 2.30 and 4 30 we're a little bit early but looks like frank is out there ready to shoot the birds so <laughs> that's cool you have like a backstage area for the birds to be kept in cool lynx and arctic foxes go on those before cool <clears throat> i like your little backstage area for the birds there they are hanging out oh of course there's protesters get out of here you protesters you don't even know what you're protesting. Hey, there! Oh, there is. I do have this one. Say, I thought I had the Eurasian lynx. There it is. It has a really big habitat, really big area for it to uh, hang out in. Nice, cool. Let's see back here. It's like, yeah. <clears throat> Took the African mod McCall away so it doesn't break the game. Ah, gotcha. I do have that one installed. I know I have that one installed, so we would have been okay there. But no, good call. Good call there. Cool, so let's go over this way. What's up, Harry? There's murmurings. It's not very loud, but there are murmurings of people wanting a European DLC. Um, I've, I have no idea what they are. I don't either. I can think of like two animals to add. But no, there's like two or three people in the community <laughs> that want a European DLC added. Because when Estine and I made fun of adding a European... Because we were also like, I don't know what you would add for a European DLC, really. Maybe some new deer species or 
something like that. Um, there were like a few Europeans that got butthurt about that. We're like, no, you could add a lot of stuff. I'm sure you could, but just when you think of rich, diverse areas of the world for animals, Europe is not one of the places that comes to a lot of people's minds, uh, first and foremost. So sorry, Europeans, not sorry, but it's, it's just not a diverse area that people really think of for animals right away. <laughs> Let's see, what do we have back here? I don't know. Yeah, these are really cool habitats and everything. <clears throat> oh, nice. We have the start of the rescue center um, right afterwards. Oh, nice, okay. It looks like you also have a construction of like a uh, safari ride too. What do we have back here? Some, like, pools for the uh, animals to hang out in, some backstage area. <laughs> yeah, so there's been, like, three or four Europeans that have commented saying, I have no idea what you would add, or the North American counterparts are better. And then one European's like, no, look, we have one animal. <laughs> Sophie, I'm sorry, but I think you've been outvoted here, my friend. Yes, I do agree there are animals in Europe, but I, I don't think that they're, <laughs> they're just not exotic enough to uh, be considered putting into a zoo right away right away so all right cool hey there is um Yoki, uh drawing zoo there yeah that's the rescue center it looks really cool yeah oh some birds yeah some european birds yeah yeah nice so next up hopefully you see an update to the gtf roleplay zoo in the future there uh next up let's go to the wallow from toves and this is gonna be a barbarossa barbarossa excuse me uh, exhibit there. <laughs> Sorry, Sophie. <laughs> I think it'd be cool overall, because obviously, you know, I'm taking the piss out of it a little bit, but um, obviously there are animals in Europe that would be cool to have in it. I just think overall in the grand scheme of things, um, Europe is not that high on the list for many people in the Planet Zoo community to like, oh gosh, we really need European animals. There's just other biomes that people like visited or revisited even like South America um, before we look at European type animals. So cool. All right, so this is from Toves. Let me make sure I get the whole name here. Yes, this is the Wallow, Babarusa Habitat from Toves. So cool, let's see here. I always love seeing that. We don't see that many Barbarossa habitats, to be honest with you. I really can't think of the last one that we've looked at. And I think they're a really cool uh, habitat to kind of build for, because it's kind of like half like pig kind of habitat, but also, I mean, yeah, it kind of just build for like a, a pigsty kind of habitat, right? Oh, man. But yeah, I love the dirty look of this, like all the, the mud and really good use of the tropic rocks too, right? To make the, um, the kind of dirty feel to it. Um, also kind of sunk down. Oh yeah, the mulch pieces. See how the mulch pieces kind of sunk down? And really cool covering up all this uh, the little mud pit here too. <laughs> and I love the fence here as well. I've seen this fence used a little bit um, beforehand, but uh, yeah, really cool. And here's our cool um, entrance, or a uh, little viewing area. I love the viewing structure right here. Really, really nice looking. So there's that, and then there's the shed. Do you all recognize the shed? If you've been looking at the Planet Zoo uh, workshop this past week, you definitely have seen this, because I think this was number one, even. I think this was even number one for a little bit. Um, this Just this shed by itself. Just the shed by itself. Um, I think the habitat made its way up there as well, but uh, yeah, you can get the shed by itself, too. So, uh, But yeah, look at it. Lots of detail work. Yes, lots of detail work, especially on the ground. Yep, good points there. Um, if you flip the mulch upside down, the bottom side is completely flat, which you can make... Oh, is it really just corn? I didn't know that. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, that's. I was kind of wondering how he did this, because, yeah, there's a lot of terrain work. Not just rocks, like the... You can tell here's the uh, tropic rocks there, but there's a lot of terrain work that they did, as uh, Toves did as well, to cover up the stuff, so... Um, yeah, really, really cool stuff there from Toves. Definitely check that one out. Now, there was uh, custom images I downloaded. Oh, they're right here. They're right here. So there are some custom images to download, but they did a really good job of letting you know. So if you want to get these um, really cool Barbarossa um, billboards in there, definitely get those. Not even um, just for this web or website, just for this build. Uh, you can just kind of download these just for, you know, overall, the Barbarossas. If you make you have your own Barbarossa habitat and you want to get some really cool signs in there, just kind of check out these uh, custom billboard sets there as well. So, noise. All right, let's head on out and uh, wrap up.
We're going to wrap up already. 45 minutes in, so about 35 minutes because we do a 10 minute roll in. <laughs> hey, what's up there, poison dork? <laughs> Use the shed for your own Babarusa habitat. It's a great shed, isn't it? I really love the, um, the kind of worn down look of it and everything like that. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. And then to wrap us up, my friends, let's go back and visit Greenfield Zoo. Always love a good Greenfield Zoo update. Always, always. Now this one, this zoo costs money to get into. I know for a fact. Kind of like the uh, uh, the RPG zoo. This one's gonna have a front gate and everything. So you all better be, have your tickets ready. <laughs> There's, you all better have your tickets ready, or you bought them beforehand. I'm not paying for everyone to get in here. I don't know what you think this is, but <laughs> yep, stream's over. Bold, right? Stream's over. Squirrels here. Squirrel. Did y'all see that there's a uh, an up show coming to Disney Plus with Doug and what's the kid's name? The kid <laughs> and the grandpa. I don't know his name either. Oh no, no, his name's uh, Carl, right? But anyways, yeah, there's a whole show about them like hanging out together, like their time after the up movie um, ended. I think it's called like just Doug or something like that. There's something about getting into a zoo and hand hand feet follow deer, I guess, and looking at red deer at a distance, looking at wild beer, and, uh, wild boar in natural habitats. Yeah, for sure. For sure. How many are there? You'll pay. Yo, Keem's got us. He's gonna pay for the whole thing. Yes, nice. Got out of paying for everyone's tickets. Carl, <laughs> I love. I haven't watched uh, just old YouTube, like original YouTube memes and videos in a while. I used to do that with like my old high school friends. Whenever we get together every so often, we just go down and like watch like old Ray William Johnson uh, videos and <laughs> chocolate rain. Get your tickets here. Come on, everybody, get your tickets. The voice of Ups Carl Ed Asner uh, just passed away today. Oh, did he really? It was really cool because um, you could tell in the trailer for this new Up show on Disney Plus that it was him voicing it too. So that's that's cool that he was able to at least do you know one more thing with Carl. That's sad that he uh, he passed away. Uh oh, come on, Babarus, I need you to keep walking. It makes me nervous. And <laughs> making me a little bit nervous here. I need those little picky feet moving there, Babarusky. There they go. Hey, nice, we're almost into it. All right, so we are actually going to pa. No, we're getting like 23 FPS, so we're doing okay. All right, so this is going to be. Uh, we're not going to uh, show off the entire zoo uh, because we have done that before many times. Gosh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm hiccuping a lot today for some reason. I think my AF3 flexes me up. <laughs> um, but anyways, well, we're just going to mainly show off the section uh, that Lucas has updated us with. And I think that's the African section. Let me go and take a look here real quick. Let me take a look at the notes here. Where are my notes? There are my notes. Yes, the African Forest Phase 2, and this is all from Lucas070. Nice. All right, so let's start um, with somewhere that I recognize. Actually, it's going to be all right in here. So we will fly down in here. If you would like to see um, other updates of this zoo, there's past community showcases that have them uh, kind of documented and everything so and you can just kind of download the zoo and take a look at it in uh full so let's look at the forest uh section phase two um yeah look at all this holy guacamole prepare to have your boots knocked off lucas is always like just on point with uh their realistic builds yes Joaquin. <laughs> yeah look at this whoa chimpanzee islands it looks like Oh yeah, look, you have the chimps there, and the, uh, what do you call these things again? Mandrills, that's right, the mandrills over here. Look at them, so close together, that's so cool. So it looks like the chimps can go between these two here, 
and the mandrills are kind of stuck on this island here. Wow, that's really cool. Um, what is this, the primate house? Let's go inside. Yeah, they just get ready, Sophie. Lucas is always on this kind of level. <laughs> He's always on this kind of level. Oops, there might be some billboards that I missed. Apologies if so. Look at this. Doesn't this just feel like the most like realistic build here? I think Lucas and Wyatt. Lucas and Wyatt Andrews both just harness this style that is just so zoo-like. I don't know how else to put it. Just Goran as well with his uh, Bakesburg and everything. There's just this uh, really good use of like stucco and I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but just it looks so good for like interiors and just the design and everything. They just, they know zoos, right? You can just tell when someone knows how to design like a realistic zoo. You either get it or you don't. <laughs> you either get it or you don't, I guess. <laughs> Look at that, you got a cleaner back here. Hey, meet our gorillas. There you go. Rudu, Luana, Sharifa, Hadaya, Sh Sahani, Zuena. That's awesome. I'm getting there, Goron. One day I'll get there. I keep hearing you say it in your live streams um, and videos. I'll, I'll eventually, you know, I'll eventually get it. <laughs> They're so good at getting that good enough of zoos across without it looking... Yeah, and that's a good point. Lion is really good at that as well with their um, savanna habitats. Uh, speaking of savanna, good. I'm glad. Uh, savanna, that you got inspired. Um, I was hoping that the zoo would do it for you. But yeah, Lion is really good at that too, where they'll take um, what should be a really plain build, right? If you look at a lot of zoos, it's really not overly complicated with interiors um, and stuff like that. But, you know, there's something to be said about doing a plain build in Planet Zoo and replicating a plain build from real life. Um, because it's actually some of the hardest things to do is to make a plain Jane boring build look real life plain Jane boring, if you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, hats off to those guys and gals for pulling that off. What do we have here? Is this a backstage area? Shut the front door. Shut the front door, this is a backstage area. It, it, you're leaving for some cookie dough ice cream? I can't even fault you. That I would leave anybody for cookie dough ice cream as well. Look at all these like airlock doors in between here. Holy shnikes. Savannah, if your inspiration doesn't include ridiculous backstage areas then you're doing it wrong <laughs> just kidding buddy but seriously look at this i know you don't, i know like a lot of people including savannah i'm picking on her but don't like to do backstage areas but holy guacamole does it just make you want to like just sit down and design a, a functioning awesome backstage type area like this this is ridiculous and with the new chain link pieces uh like actual not barrier pieces that we have in game man you can do it so um not easily but a lot easier and they do a really good job of linking up the actual in-game items as well right so this is like it's flawless how we kind of come in here and you'd be like oh yeah no they built this as well totally uh but that's you know one of the in-game facilities so this kind of pops us out into a backstage area back here we'll go look at that afterwards though i want to keep looking at the rest of the interior was really well done and don't forget to use blueprints i use especially lucas uh, i bet next week we'll see a blueprint package from lucas uh with a lot of these items in it but yeah lucas a lot of times will put their items in blueprint form and I'll, that's what i use for my backstage items let me see here like uh, my recent pine mountain sanctuary build i use a lot of lucas's backstage items that they put into a blueprint set i hope i can here yeah right here this is one of lucas's set from this zoo actually um, so keep an eye out because yeah, they will a lot of time. We'll show it off in the stream a lot of times as well But yeah, look they'll Upload these really cool custom backstage items for us to use so keep an eye out for that And don't be afraid of using blueprint items. That's why people upload them <laughs> uh, but Let's keep going through the interior here because this is insane But yeah, there you go. This is the second entrance that pops you out <clears throat> Just over here. Oh, it pops you out uh, looking over the Savannah area. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, Lion and Lucas and a few others, they do a really good job at making their Savannahs, which should, you know, kind of be plain Jane Savannahs, <clears throat> looking really, really cool, right? Just getting a little bit of dead logs in there, a little bit of foliage, but nothing overbearing. Um, but it's definitely still a Savannah, but it just has a little bit of stuff kind of sprinkled throughout it. Walking back up, uh, going back upstairs now. Nice. Can't wait to see what you start. Uh, cool. Let's head over this way. Uh, first, let's note this. Note that there's not stairs here. 
but we have access for all of our guests, right? So those with, you know, um, any sort of uh, disability, if they're in like a, uh, uh, a chair or anything like that, you know, we have them able to come up these um, pathways here and not have to worry about stairs and stuff like that. So definitely something to consider uh, when you're designing your um, habitat, especially if you're making a modern zoo. Now, is, that is something to be to noteworthy of. If you're making a zoo that's like designed to be in like the 80s, you know, 90s, 70s type era, 70s through 90s, Excuse me, I'm stuffed up. Um, you don't really need to worry about that. I know it sounds cruel or mean, but you know, they didn't think about that kind of stuff back then. So you might just think of stairs, but if you're building like a modern zoo, you definitely gotta keep that kind of stuff in mind. We need every guest to have access to areas, right? All um, all guests with all needs. What do we have here? Oh, look at the gorilla. We got the monkey. This is an outstanding um, habitat here. I love this new um, rock wall in the background that everyone's starting to use that was started by Mario. But uh, Wyatt's used it a lot, Lucas has used it a lot, but these, using the faux rocks here, I think these are the faux rocks. Yeah, the aquatic rocks. And making these really cool um, backdrop areas with them, like the fake rock looking, right? Like plaster rocks. You see it in zoos all the time, all the, all the, all the time. Especially when, like, when I go to Brookfield Zoo, the, oh my god, that, <laughs> I thought the uh, gorilla was going to attack the keeper finally. <laughs> he was like, that'll teach a keeper from going inside the habitat when there's animals in there. Um, but anyways, Brookfield Zoo, their lion habitat, um, almost all of it's made with like this fake rock material that you see in the background, so I love that. So we have a really cool aviary back here, or some sort of animal. Yeah, aviary. See the toucan or something there? Nice, and then this kind of wraps around. That's gonna be going to the next area. We have work in progress. What else, what else do we have over here? We have some, what are these? The, um, search with an N. Yeah, the Yalas. Always love a good Yala or a good hoofstock yard. Well, let's head back out this way towards the flower beds and stuff. Here we go, look at this. Really cool. There's the sable antelope. So again, we're in the forest. Remember, we're in the forest section of Africa. The forests of Africa, so we're going to see more um, animals that would be in the brush or you know, in the deep forest area that we wouldn't see them really that regularly. This is so cool. I love all and the, see the backstage pens as well. So you have these backstage holding areas for them to go into. And something that's really cool, I can't remember who I first saw this from, but a lot of times you can make these... I did this in Pine Mountain. You can actually use this as like a management um, thing. So you can take this, separate it out as a group so that the gate is separate. And look, if you really want to, you can open this up for the animals to enter into. So now it's actually open and the animals will go back in there. Um, you can actually use that as a legitimate way to play the game in like franchise mode or whatever. Put like, you know, take an animal, you know, uh, place it back here if it fit, you know. Uh, place it back there, then close the gate. It'd be like stuck back there as if you're like separating them out from male and female or like for so they wouldn't inbreed or something. Anyways, <laughs> it's always fun ideas to do there. Let's keep moving forward here. I love the elevation change too. Look at we're like just like half a story up, but even just going up just a little bit and then covering the edges with rocks here, but just going up just a little bit, you get these really cool views uh, looking back on the entire zoo here. And even so, when you're going this way, you get really cool uh, views that make things look a lot bigger than they are, right? Would you get down? This is no time to play, thank you. Uh, but yeah, look, at it's uh, really cool terrain changes. So uh, even if you have a flat zoo, don't be afraid to do little bits of terrain changes here and there. It makes a world of difference. Even a flat zoo is not flat, you know? <laughs> Unless it's built on like a parking lot or something. But nice. All right, we're going to go Gift of the Forest. We're going to go in there in just a second. But first, let's go to this back area here. Another cool savanna that has those dead branches, dead logs out there to give it just like a little bit of something, right? Just give a little bit of something, something going on in there. That looks nice. Oh, and hey, uh, speaking of backstage areas and stuff, look at this. Really nice backstage work here. What's this building here? We got to get over to this building. It's um, really cool looking. Cool. So, hey, let's go ahead and go into Gift of the Forest, which I'm going to... Oh, it's a work in progress. Okay, yep, no worries. We will come back here next time. You kind of get an idea of what he's going for. Uh, what's everyone lining up over here for? What's going on? Okay, this is more... Ooh, actually, this is kind of done up done up a little bit. Look at this. Oh, I love the uh, soda fountains there. <laughs> uh, Lucas, if you're around, I cannot wait to see the blueprints that you upload because they are going to be really useful. Oh, man, yeah, excuse me. Try not to sniff so much. I'm all just stuffed up today. Hippos? Where's that? Hippos, um... Oh, for the work in progress stuff and everything? Yeah. I gotcha. 
I got you. Man. So there you go. What do you have over here? Oh, we have the hyenas over here. I can't remember if we looked at these before, but I like the uh, the creek that's running right through here. Hey, Jake. You should tell that to uh, Estan. Maybe that, maybe that flat thing works for people as well as zoos. Maybe, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're saying the building in the background is for hippos. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, let's uh, let's stretch back around this way. We'll go down here. All right, let's enter into this. I just again, I love this structure. Look at the um, custom built with the uh, iron girders. The New World Architecture Girders or whatever. Look at it. It's so cool. I love the uh, the look of them. That's a really cool uh, roof piece there. As we enter in. And again, look at the scale. And this is why it's so important uh, to either have a guest down or, like I always use, get, get the Frank Archer down. So that you have the scale uh, really well done up. Because that's half of the battle. If you can get the uh, your building like door heights and everything to be more in scale than what Planet Zoo um, just kind of default gives us, then it makes the building look really, really um, well done. So yeah, really cool stuff there. Love all the theming. What do we have over here? Look at the uh, museum bits. It's so nice. Oh, this is so cool. Look at you uh, open these up. The Hippo Backstage has an interior too. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. We'll look at that. Look at this. You open up the panels and you uh, read some new information about the uh, the hippos. Let's take a look out here. Hello, hippos. Hello, hippos. Hippos. We'll do it this way. We have a drone. <laughs> oh, there they are. Look at it. There they are. You just need to go into the, uh, the the next room, which was if we go from here, here's the next room over this way. We go down into our underwater viewing. Oh, it's so cool. Look at you can see him walking on the uh, bottom. If you were a kid, you'd be like the perfect height right now. You'd be the perfect height if you were like a little kid, like looking down in there. Oh, really well done. All right, then you go from here and then, yeah, we back out into an aviary. Heepos. <laughs> it's like a little aviary here. Yeah, really well done. These almost look like, no, I was gonna say they look like African greys, but they don't. There's some sort of like toucan or something. Nice, and then let's uh, look at this from above. I love that entire habitat there with the hippos and the birds uh, interacting with each other or like one habitat together. Cool. All right, let's go back to the backstage, of course. Almost more excited to look at the backstage than the onstage. <laughs> As we fly over this way. Oh, yeah, you can see it already. Look at the uh, the glass bits right here. You can tell there's an interior. Whoa, look at the water treatment. Holy sh shnikes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shnikes, dude. That's insane. And look, it's all hooked up as well. It's actually hooked up where like a waterfall would be, what is at, right? All right, let's go inside. Let's go inside. Here we go. And Kadoosh. Oh! Shut up! <laughs> this is so good! Oh, I love the lighting for your uh, the interiors. Like, putting glass above and having the lighting come in, Oh, it looks so good. I love all the plants too. Like, I don't know if that would be for like feeding or just like making it look nicer in here or whatever, but I love the inclusion of the uh, interior plants as well. Get a load of this, everyone. Get a load of this. Just. Yes. Uh huh. So, I, it's a time like this that I, I always mention that we're playing the same game as these people. They don't have any special version of the game. They don't have any, you know, special wall sets that you and I don't have. This is the same game that you and I have, so just keep that in mind as we look at this and feel bad. <laughs> Take it for inspiration, right? Ah, Indian carpet. Ha ha. And then, yeah, they go outside to boom, right there. Yeah, chef's kiss you. Ah. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, the skylights are where it's at. Skylights are definitely where it's at. Um, Leaf, you're so late that we're ending. <laughs> but no worries, buddy. Um, definitely go back and check out what we, uh, how we showed off your uh, items. You almost had the trifecta, that's what we were saying. You were almost, um, you almost had a hat trick today, Leaf. Because you had some mods. You had 
um what else you had your blueprint item so all you needed was the uh the zoo file the park file and you would have had a hat trick today <laughs> but no worries buddy so cool but hey i think that wraps up the second section of forest does it not correct me if i'm wrong there lucas is this stuff new over here it might be you take a look at it still oh they're fennecs thank you thank you yeah we did take a look at this over here yeah we saw all that there's still fennecs bam bum, 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 bum. tortoises Ah, look at the goose. It's asshole goose. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> we haven't seen butthead goose in a while. But we have to see, uh, we have to include butthead goose. <laughs> I love that. Is that where the fennex are? Right there? So that's where the hyenas were. Or they were over here. A lot of really cool habitats. Closed for renovation. Oh, there's nothing in here right now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, let's see. Go on. Below the cliff. Okay, so there's uh, some more stuff on the lower level. Gotcha, gotcha. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What's this here? Oh, hey, yeah, here we are. Warthogs, toilets, and stuff below the cliff. Look at these, look at these poopers. Everyone's running to the poopers. Best poopers in all the land. I mean, actually... Are you telling me that you just you did the whole oh my gosh oh my gosh what the heck dude that's a and look at <laughs> okay this is the coolest bathroom in the world you get to sit there and while you're doing your business watch the fennec foxes doing theirs that's a moment i mean that that's that's a moment right there that that's you never see you never see that in any other zoo but that's so funny that the guests run down here to go see him in the uh, restroom. Yeah, there you go. Teeny tiny little... Actually, it's not really teeny tiny. It's right size for him. It's the perfect size for him. But look at all these little holding areas for them. Holy cow. Look at this back here. Jeez, man. And then, yeah, you get to take a peek inside the uh, the poopers. Or I guess the hand washing here. <laughs> yeah, that explains why the bathroom, uh, the line to the bathroom is so long, right? Jeez, Louise, never would have thought of anything like that. And then, yeah, as we come over here where these uh, trees are that I um, missed earlier, we have the warties. As we come over this way, come over this way. Yeah, there they are. Cool. Look at all this uh, terrain work. Oh, okay, this is at the base of that, um, the ramp. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, look at the warties here. There they are. Holy cow. What's that? Is that a bug hotel? Oh, yeah. Hey, look. And there's a bug hotel right next to it. So here you go. Jeez. <laughs> All that detail work. Here's their little barn area or their little stock hoof area. Just checking just in case. Okay. Yeah, this is what people are making. You're like, yeah, I'm done. Yep, I did it. We're, we're good. <laughs> I don't know how much I can do. Jeez. All right. Hey, Lucas, was that uh, that pretty good there, buddy? We see just about everything. I like this little plaza area, too. That's pretty cool. Almost picture like a, uh, a, a shader over top or something. But anyways, um, yeah, did we see all of the fun uh, detail work there, my friend? Or did we miss some stuff? But overall, there seems to be this whole section right back in there is the phase two of the African forest. So, uh, again, that's just a small part. Well, it's a bigger part of a medium-sized project. So, <laughs> so um, but yeah, no, if you haven't seen the rest of the zoo yet, again, we've covered it in past um, community showcases. As of right now with my system, I'm getting about 25 FPS in this project. So if you don't think your uh, computer can handle it, be sure to catch the community showcases. Or uh, what you should be doing is obviously um, subscribing and checking this out there. Uh, comment, favorite it, all that kind of fun stuff there. But yeah, there is a bunch more um, to look at. There's an uh, Asian section, the entrance area, uh, more African sections and stuff so yep there you go but cool hey i think yes yeah yep that is going to do it for us uh today for our showcase don't forget usually uh next week lucas will upload some blueprint items from the build there so if you'd like to get any of the fun builds uh from 
the zoo here uh, be sure to tune into the showcase next week we'll be showing those off or the week after um and yeah like i said before definitely download this zoo and check it out there because oh my gosh just look at all the detail work <laughs> it gets insane right it's absolutely insane so uh but cool hey that's gonna go ahead and do it for this week's community showcase appreciate the heck out of y'all uh, uh kind of readjusting with my uh wacky schedule this week we should be okay for next week should being the main component their main word um i do have a my first week of work i'm gonna be out of town for it but i believe they said i'm getting back friday um so we should be good for saturday actually is next saturday my birthday it is that's cool next saturday is my birthday so I guess I'll do a community showcase, <laughs> I don't know. I'm turning 32, so it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I've, I've, I'm past the age where birthdays really matter anymore, so it's not like I have anything like big planned or anything. So, uh, but yeah, let's hopefully plan to stream on Saturday, unless I am just, honestly, unless I'm just really wiped out from the week. Um, I might be really, really uh, tired, and if so, we'll just do it on Sunday. We'll just do it on Sunday, if so, but I will be sure to update everyone on Discord, Twitter, and all the fun social media stuff there if we're not going live. If you don't hear from me, we are going live, basically. So, but yeah, hey, this is your first time hanging out, and if you haven't already, join our Discord so you can submit some awesome blueprint stuff. We take blueprints, half-made zoos, foliage, mods, you name it there. We will show it off every single Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, and yeah, so there you go. You can never be past the age of uh, birthdays. Well, usually the things I like to do happen at like night. We usually go out. <laughs> that's that's what I should have said, right? My birthday stuff doesn't start at like 11 o'clock in the morning usually. So, uh, but cool. Hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Always do appreciate it. Go get some inspiration from all the amazing builders this week. Uh, hopefully you use some uh, really cool items and everything. And yeah, I can't wait to see everyone's items uh, that they submit for next week. But yeah, hey, thanks so much everyone for hanging out. Always do appreciate it. We'll see y'all later. Thank you.